In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Where are you, pastoring your flock, O good shepherd who carry the whole flock on your shoulders? For the whole human nature is one sheep, and you have lifted it upon your shoulders. Show me the place of peace, lead me to the good pasture that will nourish me. Call me by name so that I, your sheep, may hear your voice and lay by your speech. Give me eternal life. Answer me, you whom my soul loves. I give you the name, you whom my soul loves, because your name is above every name, and above all understanding, and there is no rational nature that can utter it, or comprehend it. Therefore your name, by which your goodness is known, is simply the love my soul has for you. How could I not love you? When you loved me so much, even though my heart was black, that you laid down your life for the sheep of your flock. A greater love cannot be imagined than exchanging your life for my salvation. Show me then, says my soul, where your pasture, your flock, where you pasture your flock so that I can find that saving pasture too and fill myself with the food of heaven without which no one can come to eternal life and run to the spring and fill myself with the drink of God you give it as from a spring to those who thirst water pouring out from your side cut open by the land's water that to whoever drinks it is a fountain of water springing up to eternal life if you lead me to pasture here you will make me lie down at noon, sleeping at peace and taking my rest in light, unstained by any shade. For the moon has no shade, and the sun stands far above the mountain peaks. You bring your flock to lie in this light, when you bring your children to rest with you in your bed. But no one can be judged worthy of this noonday rest, who is not a child of light, a child of the day. Whoever has separated himself equally from the shadows of evening and morning, from where evil begins and peace. Evil ends at noon, he will lie down, and the sun of righteousness will shine on him. Show me then, says my soul, how I should sleep, and how I should graze, and where the path is to my noonday rest. Do not let me fall away from your flock because of ignorance, and find myself a one of a flock of sheep that is not yours. Thus spoke my soul when she was anxious about the beauty that God's care had given her and wanted to know how she could keep this good fortune forever. Oh Lord, where are you pasturing your flock? Take me to that pasture, lead me to those living waters. By the grace of your sacrifice, by the grace of your resurrection, by the grace of your love, Lord. Amen. Howdy out there. Welcome back to Burning Bushes. I'm Daniel J. Newman, an Orthodox Catechumen. And, uh, this Burning Bushes is called Saint Sir. Sophronius, Saint Sophronius. Today is the day to commemorate Saint Sophronius. Today is March 11th, 2024, a Monday at 9.29 p.m. Eastern Time. March 11th was a devastating day for... Japan, a number of years ago. Anywho, uh, so 
let me first talk about Saint Sophronius. Saint Sophronius, Patriarch of Jerusalem. Let me put myself down here. And by the way, I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, so hopefully I can do okay for a show tonight. But I'm really cutting it close with how much I don't know how well I'll be able to sing and all that. But we'll try. Saint Sophronius, Patriarch of Jerusalem, was born in Damascus around 560. From his youth, he was distinguished for his piety and his love for classical studies. He was especially proficient in philosophy, and so he was known as Sophronius the Wise. The future hierarch, however, sought the true philosophy of monasticism and conversation, in conversations with the desert dwellers. He arrived in Jerusalem at the monastery at St. The Theodosius, and there he became close with the higher monk John Moscus becoming his spiritual son and submitting himself to him in obedience. They visited several monasteries, writing down the lives and spiritual wisdom of the ascetics they met. From these notes emerged their renowned book, the Le Manoran, or Spiritual Meadow, which was highly esteemed at the Seventh Ecumenical Council. To save themselves from the devastating incursions of the Persians, St. John and Sophronius left Palestine and went to Antioch, and from there, they went to Egypt. In Egypt, St. Sophronius became seriously ill. During this time, he decided to become a monk and was tonsured by St. John Moscus. After St. Sophronius recovered his health, they both decided to remain in Alexandria. There, they were received by the Holy Patriarch John the Merciful on November 12th, to whom they rendered great aid in the struggle against the Monophysite heresy. At Alexandria... St. Sophronius had an affliction of the eyes, and he turned with prayer and faith to the holy unmercenary Cyrus and John in January 31st, and he received healing in a church named for them. In gratitude, St. Sophronius then wrote the lives of these holy unmercenaries. When the barbarians began to threaten Alexandria, Patriarch John, accompanied by St. Sophronius and John Moscus, set out for Constantinople. But he died along the way. St. John Moscus and Sophronius then set out for Rome with 18 other monks. St. John Moscus died at Rome. His body was taken to Jerusalem by St. Sophronius and buried at the monastery of St. Theodosius. In the year 628, Patriarch Zacharias, Zacharias, Zacharias of Jerusalem, uh, 609 to 633, returned from his captivity in Persia. After his death, the patriarchal throne was occupied for two years by St. Modestus, December 18th. After the death of St. Modestus, St. Sophronius was chosen patriarch. St. Sophronius toiled much for the welfare of the Jerusalem church as its primate in 634 to 644. 634 to 644. Toward the end of his life, St. Sophronius and his flock lived through a two-year siege of Jerusalem by the Muslims. Worn down by hunger, the Christians finally agreed to open the city gates, all on the condition that the enemy spare the holy places. But this condition was not fulfilled, and St. Sophronius died in grief over the desecration of the Christian holy places. Written works by Patriarch Sophronius have come down to us in the area of dogmatics, and likewise his ex ex excursus on the liturgy, the life of St. Mary of Egypt, April 1st and also about 950 Treparia and Stikerias, Stikeras, from the Pascha to the Ascension. Wow. So he wrote a lot of the Treparias, and I'm not sure what Stikeras are, but I know what the Treparias are. It's the stuff like I, I like to sing, and we'll sing one of them for him here at the end. While still a Haramonk, St. Sophronius reviewed and made corrections to the rule of the monastery of St. Sava the Sanctified in December 5th. The saint's three canons for the Holy 40-Day Great Fast are included in the contemporary Lenten Triodion. Wow. One moment here. Let me use a little bit of my paper towel. 
So I got some tea here. Hopefully that'll help. Patriarch Sophronius, you were glorious in the splendor of sobriety. And through the radiance of your words, you revealed ineffable enlightenment from heaven. For by your life, you attain wisdom. And now you confirm the church as an illustrious hierarch and intercessor for us with the Lord. I can probably do that one better. I wish I memorized the tones. <coughs> Instead, I just kind of wing it. You were most wise among patriarchs, Sophronius of Jerusalem. You struggled with divine zeal, spreading the commandments of truth with your lips. You set right the foundations of the church and firmly established the monastic order. You brought to the light wise sermons and instructed by them. Therefore we cry out to you, rejoice, splendid boast of the Orthodox. <coughs> oh man. I don't know how much I'm going to be able to do tonight. My goodness. really coming on me. You can hear in my voice, too. Wish I wasn't getting sick. That's really inconvenient. <coughs> that is extremely inconvenient. Let's see what I can do. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, everywhere present and filling all things. Treasury of blessings and giver of life, come and abide in us. Cleanse us from every stain and save our souls, O Good One. Christ is risen from the dead, trampling down death by death, and upon those in the tombs bestowing life. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Holy God, holy mighty, holy mortal one, have mercy on us. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. O most holy Trinity, have mercy on us. O Lord, cleanse us from our sins. O Master, pardon our iniquities. O Holy One, visit and heal our infirmities for your name's sake. Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, both now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison.
Son, misere me, misere me, misere me, Lord have mercy. Come, let us worship God our King. Come, let us worship and fall down before Christ our King and our God. Come, let us in worship and fall down before Christ Himself our King and our God. O Lord, our God, if I have sinned in anything this day, in word or deed or thought, forgive me all, for you are good and you love mankind. Grant me peaceful and undisturbed sleep, and deliver me from the assault and attack of the evil one. Rouse me at the proper time to glorify you, for blessed are you together with your only begotten Son and your all Holy Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Lord, O oh Lord, who deliver us from the arrows of temptation that fly by day. Deliver us also from every deed of darkness, except the lifting up of our hands as an evening sacrifice. Grant that we may also pass through the course of the night without blemish, untried by evil, and deliver us from every trouble and from the fear that comes to us from the devil. Grant penance to our souls, and let our minds be concerned with your dread and Righteous judgment, nail down our flesh in fear of you, and mortify our earthly bodies, that in the calm of sleep we may be made bright by the contemplation of your judgments. Take from us every unseemly imagination and harmful desire. Raise us up at the time of prayer. Strengthened in faith and advancing in your commandments, through the good pleasure and goodness of your only begotten Son, with whom you are blessed together with your all holy good and life giving Spirit, now and forever and to the ages of ages. Amen. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your great mercy, and according to the greatness of your compassion, blot out my offense. Wash me thoroughly of my inequity, and cleanse me of my sin. For I know my inequity, and my sin is ever before me. Against you alone have I sinned, and done evil in your sight, that you may be justified in your words, and prevail when you are judged. For lo, in inequity I was conceived, and in sins my mother bore me. For lo, you have loved truth, the hidden and secret lore of your wisdom have you revealed to me. You will sprinkle me with hyssop, and I shall be cleansed. You will wash me, and I shall be made whiter than snow. You will make me hear of joy and gladness. The bones which have been humbled will rejoice. Turn away your face from my sins, and blot out all my inequities. Create a clean heart in me, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and with your sovereign spirit establish me. I will Teach transgressors your ways, and sinners will turn to you again. Deliver me from bloodshed, O God, the God of my salvation, and my tongue will rejoice 
At your justice, Lord, you will open my lips and my mouth will proclaim your praise. For if you had desired sacrifice, I would have given it. You will not take pleasure in burnt offerings. A sacrifice to God is a broken spirit, a broken and a humbled heart. God will not despise, do good to Zion, O Lord, in your good pleasure. And let the walls of Jerusalem be built. Then you will be well pleased with the sacrifice of righteousness, with the oblations and burnt offerings. Then they will offer calves upon your altar. O oh God, come to my aid. O oh Lord, hasten to help me. Let those who seek my soul be shamed and confounded. Let those who wish me evil be turned back in disgrace. May those who say to me, well done, well done, turn away immediately in shame. Let all who seek you, O God, be glad and rejoice in you. Let all who love your salvation ever say, The Lord be magnified. But I am poor and needy. Help me, O God. You are my helper and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay, O Lord. Hear my prayer. Heed my supplication in your truth. Hear me in your righteousness. Enter not into judgment with your servant. For in your sight shall no man living be justified for the enemy has persecuted my soul he has lowered my life to the earth he has made me dwell in darkness like those long dead my spirit grew despondent within me, and my heart within me was troubled. I remembered the days of old. I meditated all your works. I considered the works of your hands. I stretched out my hands towards you. My soul thirsted for you like a, like a, like a waterless land, be quick to hear me, O Lord, my spirit has failed. Turn your face not away from me. Turn not your face from me. Turn not your face from me, lest I be like those who go down into the pit. Make me hear of your mercy in the morning, for in you have I placed my hope. Make known to me the way I should go, for to you have I lifted up my soul. Deliver me from my enemies, O Lord, to you have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. Your good spirit will guide me in a righteous land. For the sake of your name, O Lord, will you quicken me in your righteousness? Will you bring my soul out of affliction in your mercy? Will you slay my enemies and you will destroy all those that afflict my soul? For I am your servant. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, and goodwill among men. We praise you, we bless you, we worship you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord, King, God of heaven, Father Almighty, only begotten Son, Lord Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, who take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us, you who take away the sins of the world.
Receive our prayer, O you who sit at the right hand of the Father, and have mercy on us. For you alone are holy, you alone are Lord, Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Every evening will I bless you, and praise your name forever into the ages of ages. You have been our refuge, O Lord, from generation to generation. I said, Lord, have mercy on me. Heal my soul, for against you have I sinned. To you have I fled for refuge. Teach me to do your will, for you are my God. For with you is the source of life, and in your light shall we see light. Let your mercy remain upon those who know you. Lord, grant that this night we may be kept without sin. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, and praised and glorified is your name forevermore. Amen. May your mercy, O Lord, be upon us, for in you have we put our trust. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. Blessed are you, O Master, make me understand your statutes. Blessed are you, O Holy One, enlighten me with your statutes. Lord, your mercy endures forever. Despise not the works of your hands. To you is due praise, to you is due song, to you is due glory. To the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever into the ages of ages. Amen. Need to blow my nose. I'm all kinds of stuffed up. But this is the symbol of our faith. This is the creed. This is the most important part. Nothing else. This is what you should listen to. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father, before all ages, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not created, of one essence with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became man. He was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate and suffered and was buried. He rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures and ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He is coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead and the life of the age to come. Amen. At every time and at every hour in heaven and on earth, you are worshipped and glorified, O Christ our God, you who are long-suffering, most merciful, most compassionate, who love the just and are merciful to sinners, who call all to salvation through the promise of the good things to come. Accept, O Lord, our entreaties at this hour and guide our lives that we may keep your commandments. Sanctify our souls, purify our bodies, correct our thoughts, purify our ideas, and deliver us from all distress, evil, and pain. Surround us with your holy angels that, protected and guided by their host, we may attain unity of faith in the knowledge of your unapproachable glory. For blessed are you forever and ever. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, now and forever, and to the ages of ages. Amen. So what I wanted to do, besides talk about St. Sophronius, which was a really cool saint from Jerusalem, so I wanted to sing some psalms, because I fear that this sickness 
that I'm currently going through, it's going to cause me not to be able to sing, like, at all. I hate for that to happen come Sunday, so hopefully I recover by then, because I love singing in church. It would make me very sad not to be able to. But it is what it is. Uh, at least, you know, there's other people to sing. If, if I can, I can just listen. But to do that, I would have to find Psalms. And I gotta read a prayer first. Alright, here's Psalms. O Lord Jesus Christ, open the eyes of my heart, that I may hear your word, and that I may understand and do your will. For I am a sojourner upon the earth. Hide not your commandments from me, but open my eyes, that I may perceive the wonders of your law. Reveal to me the hidden and secret lore of your wisdom. In you, O God, do I place my hope. Enlighten my mind in understanding with the light of your knowledge, not only to cherish those things that are written, but to do them, that in reading the lives and sayings of the saints I may not sin, but that such may serve for my renewal, enlightenment, and sanctification, for the salvation of my soul, and the inheritance of everlasting life. For you are the enlightenment of those who lie in darkness, and from you comes every good deed and every gift. Amen. Listen, O Lord of my righteousness, attend to my supplication, give ear to my prayer that is not with deceitful lips. From your face let my judgment come. Let my eyes behold uprightness. You tested my heart when you visited me in the night. You tried me in the fire and found nothing unjust in me. That my mouth might not speak of the works of men. I held hard ways because of the words of your lips. Restore my steps in your paths, that my footsteps may not slip. I cried out because you listened to me, O oh God. Incline your ear to me and hear my words. Magnify your mercies. O oh, you who save those who hope in you, from those who rise up against your right hand, keep me as the apple of your eye, in the shelter of your wings you will shelter me, from the face of the ungodly who trouble me. My enemies surrounded my soul, their fat enclosed them. Their mouth spoke arrogantly, casting me out, they now surround me. They set their eyes to bend down the earth, they seize me like a lion ready to tear its prey, like a young lion lurking in secret places. Arise, O Lord, outrun them and trip up their heels. 
Rescue my soul from the ungodly, and rear your sword from the enemies of your hand, O Lord. Destroy them from the earth, scatter them in their life. Their belly is filled with your hidden things. They are satisfied with their sons, and they leave their possessions to their children. As for me and righteousness, I shall behold your face. I shall be satisfied when your glory is revealed. For the end by the child of the Lord David what things he spoke to the Lord, even the words of this ode. In the day the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. Thus he said, I will love you, O Lord, my strength. The Lord is my foundation, my refuge, my deliverer. My God is my helper. On him will I hope, my champion, the horn of my salvation, and my protector. I will call upon the Lord and praise him, and I shall be saved from my enemies. The anguish of death surrounded me, the floods of the lawless troubled me greatly. The anguish of Hades encircled me, the snares of death ran me down. In my affliction I called upon the Lord and cried out to my God. He heard my voice from his holy temple, and my cry shall come before him into his ears. Then the earth was shaken and was trembling, the foundations of mountains were stirred up, and they were shaken because God was angry with them. Smoke ascended in his wrath, and burst into flame from his face. Coals were kindled by him, he bowed heaven and descended. A darkness was under his feet, and he rode upon the cherubim and flew. He flew upon the wings of the wind, he made darkness his hiding place. His tabernacle was around him, dark water in the clouds of the sky. Because of the brightness before him, the clouds, the hail, and the fiery coals passed through. The Lord thundered from heaven, the Most High gave his forth, gave forth his voice, and he sent forth his arrows and scattered them, and he multiplied lightning and threw them into utter confusion. Then the springs of the waters were seen, and the foundation of the world were uncovered by your rebuke, O Lord, by the breathing of the breath of your wrath. He sent from on high, and he took me. He drew me out of many waters. He will deliver me from my strong enemies and from those that hate me because they were too strong for me. They overran me in the day of my misfortune, but the Lord became my support and he led me into a wide place. He will deliver me because he willed it for me he will deliver me from my strong enemies and from those who hate me. The Lord will reward me according to my righteousness and according to the purity of my hands. He will recompense me. Because I kept the ways of the Lord, and he did not act impiously against my God. 
because I kept the ways of the Lord and did not act impiously against my God, for all his judgments are before me, and I did not remove his ordinances from me. I will also be blameless before him, and I will keep myself from my lawlessness. The Lord will reward me according to my righteousness, according to the purity of my hands before his eyes. With the holy you will be God holy. With the holy you will be holy, and with the innocent man you will be innocent, and with the elect you will be elect, and with the crooked you will be crooked, with the will for you will save a humble people, and you will humble the eyes of the arrogant, for you will light my lamp, O Lord, O my God, you will enlighten my darkness. For in you I shall be delivered from ordeals, and to my God I shall leap over a wall. My God, his way is blameless. The teachings of the Lord are tried by fire. He is the shield of all who set their hope on him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is a God besides our God? It is God who girds me with power, and he made my way blameless. He makes my feet like a deer, and he sets me on high places, who teaches my hands to make war, and you make my arms a bronze bow, and you gave me the shield of your salvation, and your right hand supported me. And your instructed your instruction restored me to the end, and your instruction will teach me you widen my steps under me, and my footsteps were not made feeble. I shall pursue my enemies and overtake them. I shall not turn back until they faint. I shall wound them until they cannot stand. They shall fall under my feet, for you armed me with the strength for war. You entangled under my feet all who rose up against me, and you gave me the back of my enemies, and you destroyed all who hate me. They cried out, but there was none to save them, even to the Lord, but he did not answer them. I will grind them fine, like the dust that blows in the wind. I will smooth them out like mud in the streets. Deliver me from the contra contradictions of the people. You will establish me as the head of the Gentiles, a people I never knew served me. The moment they heard, they obeyed me. Sons who were strangers lied to me. Sons who were strangers become old, and they became lame because their beaten path there. The Lord lives, and blessed is my God. Let the salvation of my God be exalted. The God who vindicates me, and who subdue the peoples under me. My enemies from the rage of my enemy. My deliverer from the rage of my enemies. Because of those who rise up against me, you will exalt me. You will deliver me from the unrighteous men. Therefore, I'll give you thanks to you among the Gentiles, O Lord, and sing to your name. He who magnifies the salvation of his king and shows mercy to his anointed, to David and his seed forever. That was an interesting one to, to sing. There's definitely parts in there where it's just like, as a Christian, you start to... Oh, yeah, I'll, I'll answer those questions in a minute. I just saw the chat. The idea of being blameless before God is just an impossibility, so it... It's even hard to even sing, you know, to even entertain the idea. And also destroying your enemies like that. Uh, just a different time, different framework. Uh, there's, there's certainly some mystery with the Old Covenant. And you, sometimes I ask myself, Hey, myself, in the Old Covenant... Were they always talking to the real God? Hard to say. Hard to say. But either way, I don't know. Uh, like, uh, yeah. where's my little banner? 
Disclaimer, I do not speak for the church. I speak about my personal experiences. Please come and see an Eastern Orthodox Church for guidance in spiritual matters. But, you know, I read that, uh, you know, David saying that to the Lord, and just like, I'm blameless in front of you. I, I've never done anything wrong. I'm completely pure, and that's why you'll hear me. It's like, oof, I, I wouldn't want to appeal to that myself. I would rather be like, Lord, forgive me. Um, I know I've sinned in your sight, and please make me clean. And as for my enemies, I hope you heal them too. Anyway, so Disturbed God says, Hey, Dan. Says, uh, hey. Just wondering why you sing while praying. Uh, so, especially something like Psalms is, is a great example of how prayers typically were sung, actually. Uh, they, they can be said too. It's kind of like, you know, with lyrics for music, Say, I don't know, you got yourself your Coldplay song or whatever the kids are listening to these days. And instead of singing it, they read it like poetry. It's kind of like what happened with prayers. Actually, they're typically sang. And, uh, you know, you can also read them, which is fine. And at some point in the West, it, it just became out of vogue, out of fashion to, to sing them. Again, uh, the Western world struggles, I think, because they were so divorced from the Semitic mind. You know, you just you give Gentiles a this Christianity with, and you you take it away from the, the foundation. You cut it off from the tree, and then you expect that branch to grow into a tree. Like it's a miracle if it even survives off the vine. You know, the Protestant churches and the Catholic churches, they're just schismatic. You know, they just don't understand the faith, unfortunately. Uh, not not as much as they should. Uh, but yeah, these, these are things that the, the apostles and, you know, all the Jews would have done. Singing to the Lord is deeply part of worship for, you know, the one true God. He likes to hear us sing. Such, such has been determined by the prophets in the past. Um, Matter D says, you cowards don't even smoke crack. Well, look, I never claimed to be the most brave man in the world. Sorry I let you down. Crack is whack. I'm not going to do that. I wouldn't do that for eight more views, not even one. Man, I hate I hate these allergies. I can feel that <laughs> mucus. What are you gonna do though? It's just part of life. Plants start thinking it's time to, to spread out and, and start repopulating everything. And you're just like, hey, slow down. Or at least, I don't know. Try not to make me sneeze about it. I don't understand why I have allergies. I don't understand why allergies are even a thing. <clears throat> but it is what it is. A lot in life is just about acceptance, you know. Speaking of which, I'm going to show you all something real quick. The cataclysmic polarity shift 
Is U.S. national security prepared for the next geomagnetic pole reversal? So this was approved for public release. It was made in December 2015. So that was about, eh, about a decade ago, if you do the math. So, the Earth's core is undergoing a dramatic change with the geomagnetic field strength dropping about 40% over the last 400 years. The satellite observation showing that field weakening 10 times faster than previously calculated. What, whoa. All right, so it does tell you what the conclusion is here, but we'll try to go through it. So the ESA swarm satellites found out that the magnetosphere is weakening 10 times faster than previously predicted. So this clearly shows that the Earth's core is undergoing a substantial transformation. So our field strength would go to 90%. lower during this reversal process. And so this kind of goes into the magnetosphere and all this other stuff. And this starts talking about the reversal time frames, showing that these happen, you know, at intervals. And that's how we can kind of predict that it's due. So there's two changes that affect the United States. Decrease in geomagnetic field strength and an increase in radiation entering the atmosphere and biosphere. So this, this could cause a lot of issues. This is not, not normally what I think of. I think about the electrical system going down, but this is another thing that he kind of picks up on. But it includes increased mutation rates and higher amounts of UV radiation interacting with life on the surface. This would cause a lot of cancer. And also really hurt crops. So here they talk about two things. One is the time frames and one is predicting exactly when the reversal will happen. So this goes through the things that would be influenced. Communication, satellites, the power grid. The food supply, our economy would be completely trashed, and how woefully unprepared we are. And of course, this is a huge national security issue. <laughs> so the most serious pole reversal effect is the weakening of the geomagnetic field, which decreases in strength by 90% during the reversal process. With a reversal lasting several hundred years, the greatest threat to the United States' national security would arise from adverse space weather. While the term space weather extends to many different phenomena, they're going to stick with CMEs, coronal mass ejections. CMEs create both geomagnetic storms and geomagnetically induced currents. The strongest CME to hit Earth in the modern era was the 1859 Carrington event, which disrupted telegraph services around the Northern Hemisphere, causing machines to catch fire, operator injuries, and created auroras for as far south as Cuba. And then a more modern example is the 1989 collapse of the hydro 
electric plant in Quebec, Canada. And it was within 90 seconds after the solar storm ejection event. And Canadians were left without power for nine hours. This happened despite the, the CME that hit Canada only being a quarter as strong as the Carrington event. Both events occurred at geomagnetic field strength levels much higher than would be present during a pole reversal. The likelihood of a CME striking the Earth during a polarity reversal is very high. Here this breaks down the numbers. Um, So, you know, during a 200-year period, at least 10,000 CME events with several superstorm events like the ones in 1859. They just had to happen, statistically, with those kind of numbers. Because every 11 years is, is a solar cycle, and each solar cycle has storms. Um, as stated by renowned physicist Dr. Michio Kaku, the United States is playing Russian roulette with the sun. Sooner or later, we are going to lose that bet. So this would bring us back into the 18th century for tech. Here this talks about geomagnetic excursions, like the Lachamp and Mono Lake events. So that's good. They're actually thinking about some of these other events that show that this does happen every 12,000 years. Uh, this talks about communication systems, how like during Operation Desert Storm, there was a 2003 geomagnetic storm, and that caused lots of disruptions in the combat field. So this would be very awkward during a war. Now we have more satellites than we've ever had, which would cause even more damage. So here it says days, weeks, and years for leaving people without electricity. They're saying the, ex the extremely high voltage transformers, HVs, are crucial to getting power back on after the first 24 hours. The damage is likely to occur. Out of the estimated 2,000 EHV transformers in the United States, a minimum of 350 could, rep could face irreparable damage or failure. The greatest probability of long-term harm to the power grid is created through the destruction of these EHV transformers. And each unit costs about 2 to $7.5 million dollars. The time's approaching 12 months or longer for, to manufacture, but that would be slower, slow, more fully slowed because of the, the electrical grid going down. So it'd take even longer to manufacture them. So they're saying about $2 trillion would be lost, at least, in the first year alone. And recovery could take 10 years or longer. And you can see that here's the map of the power system collapse. So, if, you know, you live in these areas, <laughs> which most people do, that's where you're going to see a lot of damage, a lot of anarchy. And it goes through that. This is a long paper. The nation is dependent upon electricity and the technology 
technology is, it enables to power the economy, navigation, communication systems, agriculture, and a myriad of other infrastructure areas. Any significant disruption in electrical energy delivery and access would devastate the nation. A large CME hitting the earth during a reversal would be the worst natural disaster to strike the country in its history. Satellite damages would be a minimum of $100 billion. Electrical infrastructure damages would exceed $1 billion. The nation would lose $2 trillion in the first year alone in economic losses. National security would suffer as FEMA, DHS, and other federal agencies struggle to deal with an electrical power blackout affecting over half the nation's population. Anyway, um, a full recovery could take years or decades and would be unlike anything seen in the history of the nation. So there's three conclusions. One is the nation's just not prepared for this. Basically... <laughs> the the re, the country has done nothing to research, prepare, or plan, prepare or plan for the next geomagnetic reversal, despite building evidence that reversal may occur in the near future. Um, second conclusion is. The only other thing that would be more devastating would be a meteorite impact or massive worldwide volcanism. And prediction, they're just saying that we just don't have enough to predict how the nature of this, this, this uh, new phenomenon. We can only look at the past. And also, we, we won't be able to predict when it's going to happen, even in... Even when the storm's coming, we won't be sure. Claire 15 says, uh, What a coward. He's probably not even smoked crack once. I admitted that, and I already apologized, so I thought we'd move on. Don't play with shit if you can't handle the smell. Fair. How's it going, Claire 15? feeling sick I don't like it I don't know where I got sick I don't know if it was driving people around or what but I feel it I don't like it so if I'm gone from live streaming for a while that's probably why it's probably because I'm just too sick to be up here talking I wanted to get a little bit of what I got left in me what I got left. Good. How about you? The big day's coming up, buddy. Four more days. Oh, yeah. You mean my birthday. Yeah, uh, I don't really think too much is going to happen. I, I'm hoping to eat some kind of seafood. Because it's Lent, so I can't eat meat. But I don't expect too much. No. But I do have this really killer song. Oh. If a solar flare tears down the power grid on the 15th, I'll forever view you as a prophet like everybody else on here. <laughs> I really hope it doesn't happen on my birthday. That'd be horrible.
A great sadness befell me from where murky. Wisdom, Lord of the universe, I call upon thee. I am your creature. I worship the Trinity. 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 I worship three persons, one Godhead. Please admit me to your kingdom. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, my King. I worship thee. O unoriginate Father of all, to thee do I send worship. Dearest Holy Spirit, generator of grace, I send up my soul. I worship the Trinity. 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 Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, have mercy. Holy Spirit of my darkness. Almighty Father, shape me to be pleasing. I want to be pleasant in your sight. Oh, how splendid to be the love creation. Given free will and the dominion to rule. I, I worship the true God of the Trinity. I worship the Trinity, 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 I worship the Trinity. A great sadness befell me from where? Murky wisdom, Lord of the universe, I call upon me. I worship the Trinity, 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 worship the Trinity. Number two with Francis, talk about taking a nose dive. What does that mean? Anyway, the Trinity is super important. Oh, oh, love the music, to be honest. Okay, good, good. Excellent. Uh, speaking of the Trinity, though, somebody really liked it, the Trinity. His name was St. Patrick. Yeah, that's right. His, his Saint Day is coming up this Sunday. Very special both to the Orthodox and to the Catholics. He's loved by all. And he has the breastplate, which I'm going to read for you all right now. I arise today through a mighty strength, the invocation of the Trinity, through the belief in the threeness. Through confession of the oneness of the creator of creation, I arise today through the strength of Christ's birth and his baptism, through the strength of his crucifixion and his burial, through the strength of his resurrection and his ascension, 
through the strength of his descent for the judgment of doom. I arise today through the strength of the love of the cherubim in the obedience of angels and the service of archangels in the hope of resurrection to meet with reward and the prayers of patriarchs and the predictions of prophets and the preaching of apostles and the faith of confessors and the innocence of holy virgins and the deeds of righteous men. I arise today through the strength of heaven, through the light of the sun, the radiance of the moon, the splendor of fire, the speed of lightning, the swiftness of wind, the depths of the sea, the stability of the earth, the firmness of the rocks. I arise today through God's strength to lead me, God's might to uphold me, God's wisdom to guide me, God's eye to look before me, God's ear to hear me, God's word to speak for me, God's hand to guard me, God's shield to protect me, God's host to save me from the snares of devils, from the temptation of vices, from everyone who shall wish me ill afar and near. I summon today all these powers between me and those evils, against every cruel and merciless power that may oppose my soul and body, against the incantations of false prophets, against the dark laws of heathenism, against the false laws of heretics, against the craft of idolatry, against the spells of witches, conjurers, and augurers, against every knowledge that corrupts man's body and soul, Christ, to shield me today against poison, against burning, against drowning, against wounding, so that there may come to me an abundance of reward. Christ with me, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my right, Christ on my left, Christ when I lie down, Christ when I sit down, Christ when I rise, Christ in the heart of all who think of me, Christ in the mouth of all who speak of me, Christ in every eye that sees me, Christ in every ear that hears me. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, Amen. <laughs> allergies are no good if it is allergies it might be a sickness it might be a cold it might be the plague but Dan what do you think about coming about the coming apocalypse huh so many conspiracy theories behind the eclipse do you think it's the rapture or what I figured I could come to you since you went to the world, to the word of God. Maybe just, maybe you might have the answers. Who knows? Oh, <laughs> that's funny. Yeah. I, if, given my experience being a former occultist, now an Orthodox Christian may or may not have tasted death. What do I think about this whole eclipse thing? <laughs> <laughs> this is all stuffed up. <laughs> what do I think in regards to the apocalypse? Now, number one, yes, I do believe we're in the end times, for sure. The Antichrist, I believe, is probably... Hmm. I don't know if I should keep saying it. I won't say it. But who the Antichrist probably is hasn't taken his position of power yet, so... Still got some time. Anywho, as for the eclipse, what does it mean? Will it be the day? The day it all ends. <laughs> Fiery storm. Crazy lights. UFOs. Tsunamis, maybe. Will it all happen on that day? April 8th? Probably not. No. But it's symbolic. The world is darkening. It's later than you think. But nobody's really going to know the exact day. It says that in the Bible. And as far as I can tell, that seems to have bared out all this time. Nobody will know. Even. Yeah. No one will know. Even, even when we get very close to it.
And we're getting very close. Do we got a decade? Do we got two decades? Who knows? I was thinking the other day. I was like, well, man, wouldn't that be an interesting idea if uh, 2033, right? That's exactly two years from Christ. That that seems to, like that would work out, but that's just a guess. I don't know when it will actually happen. And as for the eclipse, yeah, it, it probably if something does happen, I'm not saying I predicted it because I didn't. I, I have no idea. I do think it's very important, though. Number two with prices, if I had to guess, I would say we have five years. Uh, well, it's 2024 now, so that'd be 2029. I have no idea. Yeah. Honestly, I'd, I'd be pretty happy if it could just be tomorrow. You know? That would be nice. I, I wish we could skip ahead of the tribulations of, of the things that are going to still happen. You know, I, I don't want to see a persecution of Christians. I don't want to see the mark of the beast, you know, all this stuff. It's going to be lame, but it hasn't happened yet. So we still obviously have some time. This things still haven't happened. It's got to be fulfilled. So... We shall see. As for this month, leading up to that eclipse, uh, bloodiest Ramadan we'll ever see. Number two says the vaccine is the mark of the beast. Wake up. No. I think I know what the mark of the beast is. And it's going to be artificial intelligence combined with a digital currency. This will be a, a type of money that will follow you. And that's why you need to buy or sell. You can get rid of taxes, get rid of embezzlement, human trafficking, the drug trade, everything, political dissidents. You can control everybody using artificial intelligence. Everyone's got their own number. Everything tailored to them. Let's just say you're super poor. You don't make a lot of money. Well, guess what? It's a digital currency, so they can adjust it anytime they want to. Maybe you deserve to make more money. Who knows? Maybe you got some victim points. I don't know how they're going to do it in the future, but they might give you a little bit more money each time. Well, that's possible now. They couldn't have done that logistically in the past. They couldn't give everyone a separate adjusted number. But now, it can all be automated. Decisions that would take, you know, hundreds of years to, to, to do could be done in seconds. And everybody could have a, a completely adjusted rate for their taxes, for how much they make, you know, their, their benefits, whatever. Whatever you, you want, it'll follow you. It'll follow you based off of your, your DNA, maybe. But either way, that's the true mark of the beast. It'll kill us. AI will kill us. Spiritually at first. I call bullshit money is the root of all evil, but it's not digital as of yet. The vaccine's already in people's bloodstream. Yeah. Well, think about it, number two with fries. What's more likely to be true? That we've already had the mark of the beast? Or that we haven't had it yet. I vote the latter because the mark of the beast would be like the very end of the end times. And that's right during tribulations. You'd have all the other things set up in motion too. People see the precursors for like a one world government. They think we're in it. Like God... Yeah, true. Okay. Yeah, I think God God bless people who who try to figure out what the one world government was going to be like. It seemed like it would have been the West. 
We, we were so close to it. But it, it, it's not going to go that way. It doesn't look like that. Looks like there's going to be something to replace the United Nations. Something that isn't... We're not going to be part of the club. As in the Americans. So... I don't know what they plan to do with us, because I don't think we're going to like that. We don't like that idea. It's like the it'd be opposite day. Before the, the world's kind of, I don't know, it seemed to kind of bend differently when we walked around. We had our, almost our own gravity to us. What a proud nation we were. We used to tell other nations how they should conduct themselves. But here we are. Sending money over to Israel to commit a genocide in front of the whole world's eyes. We went a little too far this time with our hypocrisy. I like how you quoted Ye with the I wish of the Trinity line. I am the new Kanye West. <laughs> Kanye West would, would highly disagree. Be like, no, you. there is no new Kanye West. There's just Kanye West. I'm still here. You're whatever you are. But yeah, thanks, number two with fries, for saying that I'm in the right direction because I found God. Absolutely. Absolutely. The thing is, everybody dies, though. So, like, even if we weren't going into the apocalypse, this would still be just as important. I just don't... I don't understand why that doesn't get... So you mean to tell me you blame the Jews? No, I didn't say that. I did not say that. Did you say that? I didn't. Um, Claire 15 says tomorrow, are you, tomorrow morning, are you going DEFCON 3 on the noses? <laughs> Look, I'm just gonna say it. I'm just gonna say it. Diddy Kong did nothing wrong. <laughs> you telling me human beings have been on this planet? For over 6,000 years? That sounds to me like a choice. It sounds like a choice to me. Yeah, yeah exactly. Welcome to springtime. I was born during spring. Yeah. I don't know if I thought this is the way the world was going to be when I was just a little baby boy. Fast forward to now. But I didn't have a whole lot of expectations. I think somewhere in my mind I hoped that I was building robots or solving problem. I mean, solving crimes like Batman. <laughs> I ended a $2 billion contract with a single tweet. I gotcha. I gotcha. Number two with Fry says, Dan, can I tell you something? I want to just ruminate on that for a little bit, number two with fries. But we only all have so much time. So, yes, you can tell me something can absolutely tell me something. I welcome it. I welcome you telling me something. That's what the comment section's for, brother. Uh, 
I really hope it's not anti-Semitic, though. But let me make myself very clear right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Number two with Fry says, I'm glad I'm able to live in this lifetime to witness what is known as the end times. And shit. Um, me too, I think. I think so. So far it's good. So far it's interesting. I, I did always used to think as a kid, you know, if I could pick a time when to live, when would I pick it? And I thought, See, I'm I'm a sci-fi kind of guy, so I'm like, well, I'd want to see the end of time. I want to see how it all ends. There's just something about it. To me, it's sort of like my favorite part of the story in a way. It's the ending. And I, I really suck at, uh, at writing endings, I'll tell you that much. This is a confession of mine as a as a creative writer. I... A lot of times I, I have trouble with the endings because, you know, to me, there is no endings in, in life. Not really. It always continues on to somebody. But for you, you will absolutely experience an ending. Everybody's got an apocalypse coming. Like, you're going to die. Which, again, I, I don't know why that needs to be repeated so often but that's something like it's to me there just seems to be this disconnect where it's like if, if people know that the world is ending they get all like I, I hate to sound like the joker but they get crazier than usual they lose their minds but when it comes to like the fact that they have their own mortality it's like oh yeah well that doesn't really bother me it's like well all right, but it's the exact same thing. Either way, you're going to die. Either it's the apocalypse and everybody dies at the same time, or, you know, you die uh, in a hospital bed. But either way, you're going to have to talk to your creator. It's not going to just... You don't just have a nothingness. And if it was that way, then, you know, a lot of people with these near-death experiences, such as myself, have really been towing a very tight line all coming up with the same lie <laughs> that there's an afterlife it's just like yeah we all just it's just we you, you welcome to a club as soon as you get done with a near-death experience no matter how obscure it is you you get an email right away and they're just like welcome to the club you get to tell the greatest lie ever the lie is that you saw the afterlife and and you're going to tell everyone about it uh, but really, it's it's complete bullshit. But we all have about the same story. So he, here's the talking points. Like, look, guys, I, I wish I could completely 100% prove it to you. But it's definitely real. There definitely is something that happens to you after you die. And it's not just a something. It's like uh, you have the biggest choice ever. It, it's way simpler than it ought to be. It's it's like it is with this life, and I guess I should have known that too, but, you know, as a Christian, I know you can serve two masters. You can serve either God or you can serve Satan, and you can do Satan in different ways, you know, by worshiping yourself, you're worshiping Satan. It's the same thing with, with, with the afterlife. It's like you either you can go in God's embrace or you you go to the alternative, and there's only one. And I just don't want other people to go there. So, pray. Okay. Honestly, I love watching these Kanye West interviews where he says outrageous stuff. It really does it for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is pretty cool. Uh, number two says, I'm glad to be able to witness what is written in the Bible. Yeah, that is a distinct pleasure. Of seeing prophecy be fulfilled in a secular world, a world that doesn't believe, and you know, look who gets the last laugh. Heath Ledger wanna be. <laughs> yeah. When I die, I'm gonna be surrounded by my slant-eyed children. Since the beginning of time, people have been saying we're in the end times. Um. 
not since the beginning of time, Clay, but since Christ, because Christ said, you know, it's going to happen. And we just don't see time like God does. Uh, number two says, when I die, I'm going to unsubscribe for you. No, don't. Don't not subscribe. Just stay subscribed. Uh, did you hear about Joseph died, number two? He went out pretty tragic, but also expected way. Uh, Disturbed God says, going to watch that Mike Tyson fight? Uh, no, I heard about it on Al Jazeera, though. Yeah. In thy kingdom remember us, O Lord, when thou comest in thy kingdom. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Oh, man. Yeah, it's going to be impossible to be singing and praying. It's not coming out of my nose. It sucks. I wish I could worship more. Number two with Fry says, Fake Mike Tyson fight that will never happen. I call bullshit on that one. Just saying. That would be considered elderly abuse. <laughs> that's funny. I mean, no, that's not funny. It is funny. Elderly abuse is not funny, but you making a joke about elderly abuse was funny. See? That's how it works. That's how comedy can work, everybody. That's how comedy can work, everybody. This is the comedy. So, keep that in mind. I wish I wasn't feeling sick, guys. Guys and gals. I hope there's some gals out there. Is there any ladies out there? Single? Ready to mingle? I'm a lonely man. <laughs> you know, there's something that I consider today. The Trinity has always existed. Therefore, God has always had perfect love. He never needed creation. He just gave it to us. Just to be kind. He got nothing out of it. There used to be a part of me that, that wondered. and, and I, Well, it doesn't matter. There used to be a part of me that wondered if God got something out of creation. You know, what does God get out of it? What is our purpose? Right? You figure we got to have some kind of utility. And I wouldn't have been blaming God for that. I'd be like, all right, I just want to know what it is. I'm just curious. You know, it, are we here to entertain God? Are we here to 
figure out some kind of math equation? Is there something that God wanted to experience through us? And then it occurs to me that no, no, God had everything. God has everything. God will always have everything. God is in timeless, perfect love in the Trinity of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Creation is not necessary. So creating angels and humans and animals and plants and whatever else that God made, that was pure mercy. That was just to be kind, just to make life so that life could enjoy existence. It wouldn't have, we, we owe it to, to God. I mean, we wouldn't have existed without God. Do you, can you imagine all those moments that you've had that you cherish? The whole reason why you would fight for your, for your, to the death for your family or maybe yourself or your, your belongings or your nation, whatever it is, all those things that you cherish so much, none of that would be possible without God. Uh, did you ever forget? figure out your Etsy problem. No, I sent you the email. They said they won't even tell me why they banned me. That's how bad it is, which I don't get. I don't understand what that means. All I do is make prayer bracelets, man. It's not a terrorist device. I mean, this is so that you can get close to God. It's through Hesse Chasm. But whatever, they, they said that I, I, they're like, you're banned forever never come back here and I'm like all right why would Etsy do that to me I was pretty excited about being on Etsy too I was like I could start introducing myself as that hi my name's Dan I'm on Etsy I'm a prayer bracelet maker Clay puts out his little cross. Very nice. <sighs> Wish I wasn't feeling sick. No, I've said that multiple times. I need to say a prayer for myself. I forgot I can do that. You alone I follow. You alone I follow. <clears throat> I gotta remember, I'm sick. I should just read this out loud. You alone I follow, Lord Jesus Christ. You heal my wounds. For what shall separate me from the love of God, which is in you? Shall tribulation, or distress, or famine? I am held fast as though by nails and fettered by the bonds of charity. Remove from me, O Lord Jesus, with your powerful sword, the corruption of my sins. Secure me in the bonds of your love. Cut away what is corrupt in me. Come quickly and make an end of my many hidden and secret afflictions. Open the wound, lest the evil sickness spread. With your purity, cleanse in me all that is stained. Hear me, O you earthly men, who in your sins bring forth drunken thoughts. I have found a physician. He dwells in heaven and distributes his healings on earth. He alone can heal my pains, of who himself has none. He alone who knows what is hidden can take away the grief of my heart and the fear of my soul. Jesus Christ, Christ is grace, Christ is life, Christ is resurrection. Amen. Oh boy. Yeah, I'm getting sicker by the minute. 
That's not good. So this is what I'm going to do. While the getting is good. See if I can do a prayer for sleeping. O oh Lord who fashioned me, you know well that my invisible enemies do not sleep, and you know the weakness of my miserable flesh. And so into your hands I commend my spirit. Shelter me in the wings of your goodness that I may not sleep unto death. Enlighten the eyes of my mind with the delight of your divine words, and rouse me at the proper time to give you glory. For you alone are good, and you love mankind. I shall be sheltered under the shadow of your wings, and I shall sleep. For you alone, O oh Lord have made me dwell in hope. Into your hands, O Lord, I entrust my soul and body. Bless me, and have mercy on me, and grant me the grace of, e of eternal life. Through the prayers of our Holy Fathers, Lord Jesus Christ, our God, have mercy on us and save us. Amen. Folks, I'd stay on longer. I'd read more prayers. I'd talk about more that's going on in the world, because there is a lot. In Haiti, there's gangs taken over. There's all kinds of crazy stuff happening, but I can't because obviously I'm getting very sick and I need to heal. But I'm glad I was able to come on here before I got too sick to come on to live streams for a bit. I don't even know if I'll be able to make music. Who knows? Maybe I'll have to just make instrumentals, the dreaded instrumentals, the stuff that you guys probably would like to listen to. Look, you need to remember three things before I go, though. God loves mankind. That's you. You are loved by the only being that matters. It doesn't matter if I love you. It doesn't matter even if your cat loves you. Although, that's always good to know, because kitty cats. I digress. The Lord of the universe loves you. Think about that. Meditate on that in your heart for just a wee bit. Number two, God loves you. God loves mankind. So much so that he became us and endured a human torturous death for your salvation, even though he has no need, no need of us. Purely out of kindness even though we made the mistake of disobedience. Yeah. Very kind God. Finally, God loves mankind. So show that love. Reflect it like the light it is onto those around you. Be blessed. May the grace of God be with you. Amen.